I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Nicole. Nicole Crossdale is a marketing anal uh, analytics graduate student at the University of Florida with a special focus on creating data visualizations that are used to enhance business presentations for effective delivery. And Nicole has been able to apply these skills in different fields, such as medical technology, a restaurant and consulting industries. And she is passionate about storytelling with data and helping businesses understand how they can use the AI to improve their strategies. Um, Nicole will present the workshop, Creating Data Visualizations with Spotify Data. So everyone, please welcome Nicole. To start off with, I just wanted to, again, introduce myself. I'm Nicole Crossdale. Um, and like Julia mentioned, I'm a graduate student at the University of Florida, and I'm really excited to present with you all today. So we're going to get started. Um, just to start off with, we're going to go into talking a little bit about understanding your data, looking at it, and really um, getting a great understanding of it before you go into processing it with code. So let's get started. Alrighty, so like we mentioned, we're going to be looking at our Spotify data. And something that is really important for you to know when you're working with the data is to ask yourself a few different questions. So the first question is, what am I measuring? Um, in our case here, we're going to talk about a few of our goals and the things that we think are really important, um, especially when we have our specific Spotify data here. And so ask yourself, how was your data collected? Um, and that's always important to know because you want to know if it's reliable. And here we're getting our data from Spotify. So we know it's it's reliable because not really most of us will use that app. Um, next, do you have the right data to answer to answer the question? And so this is more of a back and forth um, topic because you will ask yourself, do I have the data for this question? And then for the next question, maybe you do or maybe you don't. So it's important to come back to this question every single time you're going through your data and looking towards your goals. And then who's going to be reading your analysis? So it's important to understand what your audience knows so that you can provide the most important data um, and visuals that they can understand um, in the best way possible, unless um, if they're using it for another project, different things like that. Um, and next is what is each variable describing? So you'll see in our data that there's different columns and each column has a title. It's important to understand because you'll see that one of the um, variables, I actually didn't understand it and that could have changed how I interpreted my data. And um, the last question is, is this raw data formatted in a way that simplifies the coding process? Um, and again, this is important because you wanna make sure that you're preparing your data before you put it into your coding language, um, just because it will make it easier for you to deal with it. Um, a lot of times data is not the most clean in the most clean form. And you'll see that especially in the business world, um, it just naturally is not like that. Alrighty. And so these are a few of the questions that we're going to be looking at today. So, um, First question is, what day of the week are most songs streamed? We're going to be looking at um, the top streamed songs that the user plays, um, the top streamed artists, how many songs are on the user's playlist, and the timeline of the playlist last modified date. All right, so you all may be wondering, how do you get your Spotify data? Because if you're anything like me, I didn't realize I could even do this. And so I'm going to walk you through this overview right here, and then we'll go into how exactly we're going to do this. Um, so you're just going to locate your Spotify profile, go to your privacy settings, and request your data. And so this process does take about a month for you to get your data back. Spotify will see that you requested the data and then you'll they'll send you an email about a month later, um, as you can see here in this picture, um, and it'll just say your Spotify personal data is ready to be downloaded. And so you can download that and then you have it comes in a JSON file. Um, so you can look at the specific files that you would like to work with and then you can go ahead and convert those. And so we'll talk about that as well. Alrighty, and here, this is um, this slide just has a link to the converter um, from a JSON file to an Excel file because I know that's a little more accessible for most people. Um, and you will have access to this presentation so you all can refer to it when you get your Spotify data and you're looking through it, um, applying this process. And so 
This is, again, an overview of what we're going to do with one of our first um, data sets. So we're going to be looking at the streaming history one file. And these are a few of the steps that we're going to take into account to clean up our data before we put it into our processes, into our um, coding language. And then this is another um, data set that we are going to be using. And this data set, luckily, is fine as is, um, but I'm going to show you all how to edit it in um, Python Jupyter Notebooks, which is what I'll be using here. So, all righty. So again, going to go back to showing you all how to get your Spotify data. So here, let me just, so you're going to go to your account. And then if you go down to your privacy settings, you're able to go scroll all the way down and download your data. And then here are the steps that you're going to take. And so what will happen is you will again get that email and you'll be able to download this file here that Spotify will provide you. It's called My Spotify Data. You'll go into it, click My Data. And then again, we're going to be looking at a few JSON files, two of them specifically here. It is the streaming history one and the playlist one. So as you can see, again, these are JSON files. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all how to convert the JSON files to an Excel file using that link that is in the presentation. So you have a link to this page right here. And so I'm going to go, go ahead and show you all how to get that file. So you're going to click Browse. Then we're going to convert two different files that we have. Again, first one is the streaming history one JSON. And it doesn't take too long. It probably takes about a minute to go through. So we're going to get that. Just give it a quick second. Awesome. And then you can go ahead and download that file. So you'll see it pop up here. And then we also are going to do the same thing with our playlist one JSON file. So again, this will just take a quick second. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and download this file. All righty, so let's go ahead and open up the first streaming history one file. Let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so we're here now. And first thing I like to do is just expand all of my columns, um, just because it's a little easier for you to see what you're working with. Um, let's go ahead and do that. All right, and so with the things that we're going to be doing today, we're going to need to clean this up just a little bit. And we also have to make sure that we understand each of the variable names. So. If you refer to the presentation, which you can do um, on your own when you get your Spotify data, um, I do have that list of what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is delete this record column. And we're gonna delete this column because there's really nothing in it here. And so it would be really important for us to um, get rid of anything that we don't need rather than doing it when we input it into the language. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we're going to add a few different columns here. So we have the end time column, and that just says the date and the time um, when we listen to the song. But it's a lot easier when you have the date and the time in two different columns. So let's go ahead and break those columns up. So we're going to add a column here, and we're just going to name it date. And then we can go ahead and type in just this a quick function that again is in the presentation. So let me show you all here again on this page. You could really just, just to make it easier for you all, you can copy and paste these functions. Copy that. And we'll add it in the date time call in the date. So if you just go ahead and click enter, it'll what this function is doing is just taking everything to the left. Um, 
separated by that space that's in this cell. So you can go ahead and press enter and then click this little square at the bottom right hand corner and get the date. So another thing we would like to do is actually understand the week date um, that is associated with the weekday that's associated with this date. So here, we don't know if this is a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. And if you remember, one of our questions are, um, one of our questions is to understand what day of the week that we will listen to music the most during the time period that we have this data for. So let's go ahead and name this column weekday. And then again, we can go right back to our presentation and copy and paste this function. And again, we're gonna go back and forth a little bit here just so that you all can understand exactly what functions you need to use and why. Okay, and then just a quick explanation of what this function is doing here. Um, we're just choosing this date and then we're associating um, a shortened version of the weekday name. And so we can go ahead and click that square again at the bottom right. And so now we have our weekday. And then we need to continue to have our time column here as well. We don't want to forget about that. So again, right back into our, right back into our presentation, copying and pasting. And then this time, our, this function is saying to the right of that space in this cell, we're going to just take out the, anything that's to the right of it. So that time, we can go ahead and click that green square. That green square has been very helpful because instead of clicking and dragging, like I know a lot of people may have may do, you can go ahead and click that green square and it'll just add the same function to all the rest of the cells. All right, so next we have our artist name. So you all should recognize the artist name because this will be your data. Um, and then the track name is just the name of the song. So here, this was the variable that kind of got me confused. I assumed this was minutes played. And some of you, maybe you assume that this is milliseconds played because that's what it is. And I didn't notice that before. So I felt like the best way for me to understand my data was probably to put it in minutes. I don't know a lot of people who say they listen to a song for 202,986 seconds um, or milliseconds. They'll probably tell you in minutes um, to round it up. So we're gonna make a column that's just called minutes played because that will be a little bit easier to um, visualize our data and get a better understanding of it. So. What you're going to do here, we know one minute is equivalent to 60,000 milliseconds. So we're going to just create a function here where we call this cell, and then we're just going to divide it by 60,000. Alrighty, and do the same thing with the green square. So now we have our minutes played. And then this is great as is, but something I noticed when I was creating this presentation was that I have a few songs here that show up to be playing for less than a minute. And that doesn't make a ton of sense to me why I would wanna make a visualization that represents, <clears throat> I'd want it to represent songs that I'm interested in. And if I'm listening to a song for less than a minute, I probably have skipped that song or I wasn't interested in it, maybe I didn't know it. And so what I'm going to do here is just make an extra column called include song. And then what I would like to do here is just create an if function that tells me if the song was played for more than two minutes. And I chose two minutes because I think most songs are over two minutes. So if the song was played for less than that, I probably skipped it. And I don't really want my data to reflect um, songs that I skipped because it's not a good reflection of what I liked, what I like in my songs or um, getting information about the genres that I'm interested in. So again, we can go back to our, we're able to go back to our presentation, copy and paste. All right, and then 
back into Excel. And so here, if you use that function that I have here, that's, this is just saying if the cell to the left it, um, H2 here is greater than two minutes, put yes. And if it's less than two minutes, put no. So here it just shows yes. And then we're gonna click that green square again. And this is this next step is just an extra step that I think would be helpful for you all to really see the data um, in the best way. So I'm going to create a con conditional formatting here um, where you all can see if the if the song was listened to for more than two minutes or less than two minutes. So I'm gonna say here if the text is yes. In this, let me highlight this whole thing. If the text is Yes, we are going to make it green. And then if it's no, we're going to make it red. All right, so this is just a quick way for you to look at your data. If you needed to refer back to it when you are messing around with it in your code. So here you can just quickly see songs that you need to listen to for less than two minutes. And something I liked to do was check some of the songs to see if I really just listened to them for two for less than two minutes and kind of understand why I did that. So these two songs here, um, I, these are some, some songs that I really liked, but maybe I just skipped them because that day I didn't want to listen to them. Um, and so again, you could just check this to understand more about it. And you will understand a lot about your data, mainly because this is a reflection of you. So we have all of these variables here, and this again will just make it easier for us to process everything. Um, and then let's go ahead and jump to Jupyter Notebooks. We're going to input this file, and I'm going to show you all the different ways that you can use it. All right. And so hopefully everyone can see this page. Let me just double check. Can it, someone? Let me know if they can see this page correctly. I just want to make sure you are able to. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. All righty. So we're first thing we're going to do here is just make note of the time frame that we're looking at. So I like to just do this because if you when you get your Spotify data, each of those streaming history zero through whatever number it may be files um, give you information from a certain period of time. And so just to make sure you understand a little bit about that period of time, it's good to make note of it here. So we're gonna go ahead and find this. And so next we're just gonna add in a few different packages that we may need throughout this. Um, some of these in here, I like to just add as many packages as I can so that I, if I need to use it, it's already there and everything can go through. Let me just let that run. Alrighty. So our next thing here is I have written a path for me to get my um, my data, but I understand that obviously your your paths will be different when you are using your Spotify data. So I just commented out here. Um, you can go ahead and edit it when you get your data and you have it in a certain area, maybe it's in a specific folder. Um, but what I did here for you all to follow, if you would like to, you can go ahead and upload your data or the data that was given to you all to Jupyter Notebooks. And then you can have that in here. And this is another way that you can import your Excel files. So we're gonna import that streaming history one JSON file. And it should show up right here. Awesome. So this looks exactly like we've had in our Excel document that we just made. We edited each of those columns and we make sure we understood the variables. And so what we're going to do next here is remember those songs that were played for less than two minutes and we assigned the no to them. Here you can just see all the yeses, but the no's are in here because this is just showing a condensed form of the data, just the beginning and ending parts of it. So we don't really want to include those songs that have the no assigned to them or are le played less than two minutes. So what I did here is assign a variable to those songs. And so this is just calling the data frame, looking at this specific column and, the, and making it equal to um, what the value no. And then 
Next here, you can see I wanted to drop those skipped songs. I didn't want that in the data frame because I don't feel like it's an accurate reflection of me and I don't want to have that shown in the visualizations that we're going to make. So this here is just dropping those songs and we're gonna look at the new data frame without the, two, the songs played for less than two minutes. And what you can see here is that originally you had 10,000 rows here and now you've gone down to seven, well, in my case, I've gone down to 7,103 rows. Yours may be different. So this will just be an automated way for you to look at those songs. And maybe you're interested in songs that you play for more than three minutes. So you can make that change in the Excel file, changing um, that function where it said to play the song, to look at the songs that are played for less than two minutes. You can change that to three if you would like to, or whatever number that's inter interesting to you. And so now we're just gonna get an overall count of what's in each column. And this is a really nice function that allows you to see how many values are in each column. And the reason you're doing this is because you wanna see if there's any null values. And because sometimes having those null values can change things up and you wanna make sure you're aware of that so that you can go ahead and try to find it and get rid of it if, if needed. So luckily here we have all, all of our columns are filled equally. And then again, we're going to look at the shape. And so this is just saying the number of rows and the columns that we have here. Alrighty, so let's get into creating this visualization. So our first goal that we're looking for here is what day of the week are songs most streamed? And that was something that was really interesting to me. I just was curious to know during this time frame that I have the data for how what day of the week was I listening to music the most? And so first thing we're going to do is um, kind of get those columns that we're interested in that are helpful to find this goal. So we're looking at the dates, the weekday, and the minutes played. So we're going to go ahead and call those columns, and then they show up right here. And then we're going to assign a variable just with the weekdays in order, Monday through Sunday, because what will happen is uh, the computer will show your data, your variable names. Sometimes not; they're not in order. So this may not show up Monday through Sunday. It may show up starting with Saturday and ending with Wednesday, just because that's the order of the values in the, this column. So we're gonna go ahead, make a uh, variable that puts all of our weekdays in order. And so now we're going to count up the minutes played each day of the week for this data period. So we're gonna look at those weekdays and the minutes that the music is played during this entire data frame. Um, and then we're going to re-index it into this order. So we're gonna have Monday through Sunday. And now we're gonna create the graph, which is a really exciting part. Um, so this first section, we're just assigning a variable. Again, this is the same thing as what's here, because this is what we're interested in. We want to create a visual of this. And then we're going to go ahead and just, these are just a few formatting um, lines here, or lines of code, just labeling the y-axis, the title, different things like that. So let's go ahead. And so this is what will show up. So here, obviously, you can see in this table, what day of the week you listen to songs the most. And that's on Tuesday for this example here. But if you're showing this to someone and they're just looking at it really quickly, they're going through um, reports quickly, you want to make sure this is simple for them to see. So I felt like this was the best way to really understand the data quickly. And so here, something that I like to do is just have all of my findings written here at the bottom, just so that I can refer back to if I needed to. And so obviously here we can see that Tuesday we have the most listened to, it's the most listened to day of the week. Um, and then Saturday is the least listened to day of the week. And with this information, if I were on the Spotify team, I would say maybe have more new music ads played on Tuesdays because the user is most likely to see it then. And so on Spotify platform, it would make more sense for you to put these ads out on the day that the user listens to most because it is more effective for them to be exposed to new songs and possibly use the app more. 
So the next thing we're going to go into is our top 10 streamed songs. Um, so first, we're going to view the number of times each track name appears in the data. And so we're just going to use this function to count the number of times the song shows up. And so as you can see here, this creates a table of just what, how many times those, that song was played during the time period. And then we're just interested in the top 10. That's our goal. So just the top 10 here. Using this function, the dot head, adding that to the end of um, this function here, you can just get your top 10 um, rows that you're interested in. And then you can go ahead and make your graphs. And here, you all will have access to this script. But I added in a quick link here just so that you can get more details on making these bar graphs if you'd like. And so what we're going to do here is create this graph. We just took our value count of how many times our top 10 songs were played, changing the color, labeling a type of graph, and then making a title and also a Y label. And if you really wanted to add um, maybe an access name here, you can go ahead and do that quickly. So you can set up. Here we have PLT um, Y label, and that just shows the access name for the Y label. We can also do this for the X axis too. So that's the label. And then maybe we can just name this songs. And so it shows up right there. It's really simple. And again, this would just be a quick way for you to compare the top 10 songs that you listen to. And then right here, just have a find, just have our findings here as well. And then what Spotify can do with this information if they were looking at it, um, they can create an algorithm that auto plays music in the same genre or artist um, for this user. So our next goal that we're going to go into is to play to show our top ten streamed artist. And so this is very similar to what we did before, but we're going to be focusing on the artist name rather than the track name, which is the song name column. I'm not going to go in too there because you all uh, just saw that with the previous goal. All right. And so we're getting the top 20 this time, and you can just go ahead and change this number to whatever you're interested in. And so these are just the top 20 artists. And then here we're creating a graph. This time our graph is a horizontal one, um, and that was easily changed here by just um, changing this name from bar to bar H. And we added in the title, the Y and X labels again, um, and we have that here. So we can simply see that I listened to Bad Sons um, the most during this time period, which is reflective, which at least I think is pretty reflective um, because I know I listen to their songs quite a bit. Alrighty, and then we have our findings down here as well. And now we're going to shift to our next data frame. So hopefully you guys remember, we're also going to be looking at the playlist one data set. And so what we want to do is start off from the beginning again and look at our data just to make sure we understand each of those variables. So it's important to do for both. So we're going to go ahead and open up that file. Alrighty, so we have that here. I'm gonna go ahead and just expand those uh, those columns again. Just so we can get to see everything as well as possible. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So what we're seeing here is that, again, we have some columns where there's nothing in it. And we're probably, <clears throat> excuse me, we're probably not going to need that. So what I'm going to do this time, instead of showing you all how to delete the columns in Excel and then import it into your Python or Jupyter notebooks, I'm going to show you how to get rid of these columns in um, the coding software. So we understand most of these variables, almost all of them, playlist names. These are all pretty straightforward. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go straight into Jupyter Notebooks. 
and we are going to import this. So I did the same thing here. Um, I do have a path for my data set um, and I just named it playlist. And again, it's going to be different for you all because obviously you'll have it in a different um, folder. It may be a different location in your computer. So another thing you can do again is upload this file up to Jupyter Notebooks and then you can just go ahead and run this code and it will import the file, the Excel file. So again, we see here that a lot of these columns are blank, but something that we maybe don't want to do is go through the whole entire data set. So something that's very easy here is to just simply count how many values are in each column. So with this function right here, you could go ahead and see in the playlist column, as we saw briefly um, when we were looking at the raw data, there's no values here. And the items column, there's no values. So we're probably going to get rid of a lot of these and maybe even get rid of the number of followers because maybe we're not interested in that to achieve the goals that we're going to be looking at. So here you can go ahead and use this here. You can drop all of the rows or drop all of the columns that you're not interested in. So we're not interested in the playlist one. You can see that here. Items, we're gonna get rid of track. We're gonna get rid of the track URI. If you look back at the raw data, you can see that it is this really long code that I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if you all do, um, but you can get rid of that because again, that's not important for our goals here. An episode, wanna get rid of, nothing's there. Local track description and the number of followers. So we're gonna run this. And now we just, we've condensed our code, uh, we've condensed our data frame and we can go ahead and just look at these specific variables. And so first let's just list out the column names that we have. And then we can go ahead and print the new data frame just so we can understand what we're working with here. So this is definitely a lot smaller and a lot more intuitive for someone to understand if they're just looking at the table. And so the first thing we're going to do, because again, if you remember up here, we are trying to find how many songs are on each playlist. So we are going to go ahead and fill in the null values in the playlist names column until the next one. So. Here you can see there's a playlist named UF, UF Mems. And these are the songs that correspond with that playlist, but you don't see the playlist name here and here. And so it's gonna be a little difficult um, for your computer to recognize that the song New Light, for example, is on the UF Mems playlist. So what we're gonna do is re repeat that playlist name for the corresponding songs on that playlist up until the next one shows up. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you guys are a little uncertain of what I mean, um, this is what the column is going to look like. And then I'm going to print the whole playlist um, data frame so that you can understand what I mean here. So now you can see if you were just looking at this, this row, row one, you see that the song New Light is on this playlist. And so that's the same happening throughout. And so what we're going to do here is just look at the unique values in the playlist names in the playlist name column. So again, we just duplicated the playlist names over and over and over again to correspond with the number of songs that are on that playlist. And so here we can go ahead and just see all of the names of the of the playlist. And then maybe we don't want to count up each of these names and we're interested to know how many playlists we've created. So here you can simply see the number with this function right here, the n unique. You can see the number of unique variables or the unique values. And now we're going to go ahead and count the number of songs on each playlist. So let's do that here. And so each of these are I hope you guys are able to recognize that these are the playlist names and then these this is how many times um, it shows up and that's the number of songs um, that these playlists have. 
So again, this just makes a quick table that you can refer to, but if you wanted to create a bar chart, you could go ahead and use what's here. And so each of these lines just describe or add to the data, add to the visualization. Um, so again, we're just looking at the values of how many values are of songs are on each playlist name. And then here in this line right here, I went ahead and rotated the names of each of the playlist because it was a little easier to understand if you have them straight across, they're kind of overlapping. Um, so this is just in a formality thing. And then you can go ahead and make your title, your X and Y variable names or your X and Y axis names. Alrighty, so we are wrapping it up here. And this was an interesting um, challenge that I think you all will really enjoy. This is definitely a challenge for me. Um, because I didn't really understand how to do this initially. I was like, how am I going to make a timeline of all of the, of the last modified times, um, each the last time each playlist was modified? So this is a challenge here. I want you all to, when you get this, to possibly try it yourself and then compare and see if you can um, do this. So we'll go ahead and get into it. So first, we're got, what we're going to do to get the last time each playlist was modified, we're going to take the name. And if you remember, there's a column that's called last modified date. And so we're going to get those two columns because that is ultimately what's really important here. And then we are going to drop all of these we're going to drop all of the rows where there's no date. So we really just want a table of the playlist, um, the playlist name, and then the last day it was modified. And it doesn't repeat here. We don't need it to. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drop all those rows that have those null values. So we'll use this function here. And so now you get a cleaned up chart that displays the playlist names and their last modified date. And so if you look, this is not in order. And that's the whole point where why we're making this timeline so that we can get a better understanding of when's the last time we put a song on one of these playlists. All right, so we just look at that. And similar to what I did before, this is just a helpful link that gives you a little more detail on making this timeline. And I thought it was important to add here so you all can refer to it um, if you'd like to when you get your Spotify data. All right, so what you're gonna do is import these packages used to execute this section. And then we're gonna assign a variable to the list of last modified date values without the null. So we remember we dropped all of those rows um, where the last modified date values were NA. And then what we're also going to do is convert the date time, the date time string to we're going to convert, sorry, we're going to convert the date to um, the date time. So what's happening here, the reason why we're doing this is because your date is just looked at as a string in uh, from our, from Jupyter Notebooks, they're kind of recognizing it as, hmm, this is just, this is no different than typing someone's name. It just looks like it doesn't really have a lot of meaning. So they don't know to put it in a certain order unless you tell your, um, your code to do so. So we're just letting, with this line here, we're letting our, we're letting Jupyter Notebooks know that we want these dates to be recognized as actual dates rather than just um, strings. So we're gonna go ahead, do this and that. And so next, this section here is just editing the length of time um, covered on the line. So displaying the time frame plus three or, or three months before or after. So you'll see this when I show you the final result. But what we're doing here is we're adding a few months ahead or a few months after on the 
timeline. The reason why is because we don't want the timeline to look too condensed. We're going to space out everything just so that it's easier to understand. Um, and so this is what is happening here. And next, we're creating a variable name. We're creating a variable that assigns a playlist names. Again, we're just looking at the unique playlist because if you remember, we duplicated those playlist names a ton of times to correspond with how many songs are on each playlist. And we don't really want to do that again. We just want to know each playlist once. We just want to see it once. Alrighty, here we have our next line of code. And this is just looking at the labels associated with the date. So this is just putting the labels in a certain area. And then here we're just creating, we're just changing the size of the visual features of the vertical line. Um, and then some of just different aesthetics of the visual. So what we're gonna see here is this. And so what you're seeing here is again, the timeline. You can see the dates that are right here. Um, Pretty simple to see. I organized this from earliest made or earliest modified dates to the most recent modified dates. So you can see the order of how everything was um, everything was put onto the playlist. And this is really cool. And another thing you can do here is you can go ahead and change the titles. You can edit that pretty easily. So. Um, for example, yes, I, this says Nicole's playlist. Maybe let's look at a name in the chat. Maybe there's a Jesse in the chat. So we can go ahead and change this to Jesse's name if we really wanted to. And that shows up pretty simply. Um, so I think this has just been a really great way of visualizing your Spotify data. And I really hope that you all will use this um, because it is really cool to just see what you can do. And since you have this code already, what you can do is kind of, this code just kind of filters everything that is in your raw data. So if you go ahead and follow those steps, um, the way that I showed you initially, um, maybe make some edits if you're interested in it. You can uh, see all of these different things about your Spotify data. And maybe if you're presenting it to someone, that would be really interesting. You could go ahead and add all of these visuals in here. And so I just want to close up with the whole point of these visuals, whether you are making reports in business or if you are just trying to visualize something to make it simpler for your audience to understand. Um, these are really powerful tools. You can get a lot done. And also it kind of serves as evidence for whatever your claim may be. Maybe you had a an idea that you listen to a certain band um, during your time of having Spotify or during the time you have a data frame, you, you have um, the data, but you can go ahead and prove that with all of these visuals that I showed you. And it's very straightforward to see. And that's something that again, makes that visual so powerful is that you don't have to put a lot of thought into this. Like for this timeline, for example, you don't have to put a ton of thought into it. You just look through it and um, you can easily see what playlist was last modified um, before or after a date. So now that was everything for the script. And again, you all will have access to this. And so now I'm gonna open the floor for any questions that you all may have. Um, perfect, thank you so much for that work workshop. That was really exciting. I just requested my data from Spotify. So I'm really awesome. excited to dig into that. Um, we have um, some questions in the chat and Q&A. So just to start off with some kind of like small detail questions, um, were the playlists you were showing, were they playlists you created or ones that you liked or followed? So these were playlists that I created. So this Spotify data, um, they just give you a lot of information about how you use Spotify. And I think you all saw there were quite a few different um, files in that Spotify zip folder. Um, and a lot of those things some of them just show when you um, make a purchase to Spotify, different random things, but um, those playlists were things that I've made over the years. So it was really interesting to just get a little more info about it and how I worked with it. Definitely, that I think goes to someone else's question when someone was asking whether um, you provided the same files that you analyzed here in, in the Google Drive we shared, mm -hmm. which I believe is true. And also 
um, whether Spotify sends these exact same JSON files that you're working with. So it seems like they send these file types as well as some other files. Is that accurate? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they, they send them. So you, you were just asking if they only send them in JSON files. Or, or do they send, like, what exactly does Spotify give you, I guess? Um, okay, so yeah. yes. So Spotify will give you um, a few different files that, so one of which we looked at, like the streaming history one file. There's also, for me at least, I had a streaming history zero file, a streaming history one, a streaming history two. So those just showed all of my songs. I think it's an in increments of um, 10,000 on each file. So mm. some of you may get streaming history up until 10, maybe, just depending on how many songs you listen to and um, how often. So that is, is that kind of what you are looking for? Yeah, yeah, that, okay. um, that really clarifies a lot. That sounds mm -hmm. great. Um, another question was, um, you use, you showed kind of some strategies to use both Excel and Python for your analysis. Um, so is the reason you might choose Excel to clean data as opposed to cleaning the data in Python itself? Mm -hmm. So my goal here was I showed you all with Excel, but I also wanted to show you with Python how to clean up your data. Um, and the reason I did that is just because a lot of people feel as if Excel may be a little more intuitive. I understand that coding, there is a bit of a learning curve. Um, and so using Excel, that just allows you to really get do some pre-processing steps before you put it into Python, and that just makes it a little bit easier if you're not super familiar with how to use um, the coding language. Great, that makes a lot of sense, and it's a great reminder that there are so many, there are often so many ways to do something, and whichever mm -hmm. kind of works for you um, is great. Um, so another question is, um, you showed some kind of conversions between. Um, JSON, JSON and Excel file formats. If someone was kind of wanted to keep their data private and didn't want to put, upload it to a website like that, do you know if there are any strategies for that conversion um, that wouldn't involve uploading it to a website? Mm -hmm. That is interesting. I believe you can go in straight into um, Python and just upload the JSON file. I really just incor incorporated that converting step just so that most people may want to do that just because it's easier to see your data. Something that I found as an issue on my computer with the JSON files was that I couldn't open them so I couldn't really see what I was working with before I imported it into Python. And again, I think it's really important in the pre-processing steps to make sure you see your data and understand each of those variables. Um, and having the JSON files, I wasn't able to open it. So I think that's the main reason. But if you wanted to go and keep your um, keep your data private, you didn't want to have it on the converting um, application, you can go ahead and just import it. It, or import it straight into Python using some the um, JSON functions. Okay, yeah, that's really helpful. So, um, so another question related to I believe that there was a column called time um, mm -hmm. in addition to like the milliseconds column. Yes. Um, so did that refer to the length of time or the time of day that the song was played? Yes, so that was referring to the time of day that your song was played. So you could go ahead, this could be an extra challenge for you all to understand what time of day you listen to songs the most and maybe um, look at a certain range. That would be really interesting too. Now that oh, it, the question was asked, I wish I included that. That would be really great <laughs> to see, but I challenge you all to do that. And um, I believe you all will have my email and I would love to see if you do that. That would be really interesting to understand more about how you listen to music. So yeah, that's what the time um, column was for, just showing your time of day that you listen to. And it's in military time, I believe. So you just might have to do some conversions if you um, are used to having it in normal. Like, um, that's great. Yeah, it really underlines how many different options there are to analyze the data. Um, one person is asking, um, so there was some that you had a step where you were replacing um, some of the playlist names and just whether you could repeat that point again. I think that, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yes. So just to make sure, were you referring to just filling in the playlist names? Um, I, I think that, that might have been the question. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I can actually go ahead and share my screen again and then go back to that. Um, I'm glad this was asked because this part is a little... It can be confusing as to why we're doing it. So I believe you all are talking about right here where we import the name, um, we import the data frame, and then we go ahead and 
have see the playlist names here. So what's happening is that in this specific step, we are interested in seeing how many times or how many songs are on the playlist. So we have here, for example, the UF Mems playlist. But then you see here it says it says it's a null value it's a null value here. So you know this just when you're looking at the table, you understand that okay, all of these songs correspond with this playlist. But Python is not quite understanding that. So what you have to do is repeat with those this name, this playlist name a few times to show that, for example, the song New Light was played on this playlist, as well as the song As It Was, that was also on this playlist. So let me go down to that function. So right here, this function is filling in those null values. And it's filling it in until the next one shows up. So when you look at the entire data frame after we've made this change, you can see now that it's simple to see this is a playlist name, this is the song that's on it. This is the song that's on it, and this is the playlist name. And the same thing happens. Um, and then this is this is also the same for other playlist names. Um, and this is just easier to count up how many times the song shows or how many times the playlist name shows. It also corresponds with the number of times the song shows up. So. I hope that makes a little more sense. Um, and what I've also done when you all get this um, script, I have comments here as well that will make it a little bit clearer when you're going through it. Okay, perfect. I think that that really clarified that point. So thank you very much for that. Of course. Um, someone else was asking um, a bit of a bigger picture question, which sure. is let's say you had access not only to your own Spotify data, but the Spotify mm -hmm. data for like a group of friends or a larger mm -hmm. group of people. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of questions um, might you be interested in answering for that kind of data or what might you do differently in the process of analyzing mm -hmm. the data? Yes, so in that process, that it would be also very interesting because you can actually apply all of these questions, but to the group Spotify data. So you can see collectively, how many times you all have listened to a certain song or what is the most streamed song within that group. So that would be really interesting to look at as well. And then if you have the individual data of each person in the group and you have the group data, you could compare that to see who's making the biggest impact on the data, who's listening to it the most, who's listening to the group um, playlist the most. Um, and that can give a lot of insight as well. I think that would be really fun to look into as well. Definitely. Yeah, I know. That sounds great. Um, and someone else is asking about how the information provided by Sp Spotify compares to um, basically what they provide in Spotify Wrapped. So using the mm -hmm. information that they give you, would you be able to make your own kind of custom Spotify Wrapped? In a way, there are quite a few different things that you can do. So obviously Spotify wrap that will come in a different form. You'll be able to see the pictures of um, the song albums that you've listened to, different things like that. So in a way, this is a shorter version of a Spotify Wrapped. Um, you are able to get a bit of information from a certain time frame. So Spotify may look at, I believe they look at the first 10 months of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe if you had your Spotify data and it reflected those 10 months, you may have to conjoin a few of those files, those streaming history files to get all 10 months because it may not cover everything. But you can go ahead and get some of that information and you can maybe even compare it to when you get your Spotify rap data. And that will let you know if you're doing the same thing that Spotify is doing, because obviously I'm not on the Spotify team, but they do take your data and give you a more visual representation of it. And so what we did here today is something very similar. Okay, great. Um, that definitely sounds very exciting. Um, well, someone else was asking whether you're only able to download your own personal data or whether there's more data available to download from Spotify. Yes, so um, as of now, I believe you're only allowed to download your personal Spotify data. I think that just for confidential reasons, you <laughs> to get your own data. Um, but something I also did while I was creating this project, I asked a few of my friends to download their data and they sent me over, they sent over that streaming history um, file 
as well as the playlist files. So I was able to understand a little bit more about their data as well and show them what I know. And they could tell me if that seems accurate. And I know most of the time it, it would because it's their data, but um, <laughs> that's something you can do as well. Is just ask your friends or family for their Spotify data too. Perfect. Um, and so I think we're almost at the end of time, but just to ask another question. So, um, someone was asking, I think that they were mostly familiar about using Tableau for data visualization, mm -hmm. um, but they're wondering, is Tableau really necessary for data visualization or would you recommend, you know, Python or R? Do you have any specific recommendation for mm -hmm. if someone wants to visualize general data? Mm -hmm. So when I was creating this presentation, since I understood that most people are looking to get into coding, um, I thought, I personally feel like Python is the most intuitive language that there is, so I wanted to use that. I personally am not very familiar with Tableau. I understand that R will also show visualizations, but I think personally, I feel like Python allows you to see visualizations in a different way, and you can also edit your visualizations with the different packages that you use. So there's matplotlib, but there's also Seaborn. Um, and so you could definitely go into um, editing your visualizations and just changing up the ways that they look through Python. I feel like that's a very good platform to start with. Um, okay, great. Well, I think that uh, we're going to move on to the next workshop, but thank you so much for a great presentation. Of course. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great rest of the day. All right. Thank you so much.